sorry guys, I've not been able to make it to Kirkland yet this week, but uh, I have Trader Joe's right near the lap. So we got the, I've always been curious is how kind of adulterated and dirty the spray olive oils are, and spray oils are. So I got the organic olive oil spray, no propellants, and the organic canola oil spray. Uh, both from Trader Joe's. So let's try out our oil extraction method on these two oil sprays. All right, everyone, especially all my new followers that Ave, A-V-E, kind of sent my way. I do not have the Kirkland brand olive oil yet, but I do have Trader Joe's right near the office, and I got the olive oil spray and the canola oil spray. And I need to get better at analyzing oils anyways. And I'm not super interested in the oil, so I'll show you some GCMS stuff where I can look at the oils pretty easily with this, the methyl ester but mainly looking for additives to the oil. And so we're going to look up a new method uh, and see if there's somebody looking at uh, kind of like not the oil portion, but extracting all of the other things that could be in the oil uh, out so we can analyze them on LCMS. All right, so I'm attempting to get better at seed oils. And so, of course, I turned to literature. I just pulled up a QTOF paper for LCMS metabolic profiling of different unrefined cold seed oils. I'm assuming we're looking for authenticity to test for oil adulteration. So this is the protocol that seems like these guys are using. Gave them really good results. Use Metlin database. I'm gonna probably use HMDB or Cirrus, but the method is what we're after. The oil samples and the bio mixtures were prepared by liquid liquid extraction uh, into 0.5 mils of oil. That's a lot. Uh, and 0.5 mils of methanol water uh, 80 20, so 80% methanol, 20% water. Then these samples are shaked by hand for 30 seconds and then vortexed for two minutes, so really mixed up good. Then they're centrifuged, okay, for five minutes, which I can do here. Then give a temperature on the centrifuge, that's all right. Um, and then the top layer, 0.3 mils, so like 300 microliters of the top layer is collected and mixed with pure water. So you see, we're trying to like kind of get rid of the stuff that won't be able to run on the LCMS because you have to be water to acetonitrile as your gradient. And you don't want to dirty up your column too much. You got to kind of um, kind of tailor your sample to that. Uh, okay, so then it was refrigerated down to four degrees, and my centrifuge I can run at four degrees, and then it was recentrifuged for fifteen. Um, and then 30 minutes, uh, oh, 15 minutes in the fridge and then 30 minutes centrifuged, again at, at 12,000 Gs. And then the top layer was collected and filtered. Uh, I'm probably not gonna filter it, but we'll see how clear the top layer is. So that's a pretty straightforward protocol. So we're gonna take. And so I took and scratch down the protocol here. We're doing 500 microliters of oil, right? 500 microliters of 80, 20 methanol water, vortex it for extraction, spin it out. Pull 300 microliters of the top, 450 microliters added of water, chill it out four degrees, then re-spin it, and then that sample, I may dilute it more, we'll see how concentrated it looks, onto the QTOF, and they're saying positive mode, C18, that's just regular form of acid to nitrile gradient, full gradient. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get the oil into the tube here. So I'm gonna try to do this on camera not on my phone. Hopefully I don't get it all over my desk. This is the Trader Joe's no propellant olive oil spray. Let's see what we get here. Beautiful. That's enough. All right. This is the olive oil. Boy. Well, there's my Sharpie. All right. This is olive. I'll put that into my rack. All right, and then, as we can see, it's right out of the container. This is the canola oil spray. Again, hopefully, I don't get it on my desk. There we go. A bunch of that guy. Very nice. All right. I mean, there's no way this stuff's just oil. I mean, come on. So these guys produce, you know, a lot of bubbles. So I'm gonna wait for the bubbles to settle out. But I'm assuming, like, maybe it eventually will go clear. But this is I mean, it's pretty gross looking and really good now. So I just vortexed them a bit and then sonicated them. As soon as you sonicate, all that gas, dissolved gas, just comes right out. 
And you know what? It looks like, uh, you know, olive oil. Definitely not extra virgin olive oil. Just plain, regular olive oil and canola oil. So, I, you know, good, good starting point. I just made up one mil of 80-20 methanol water. Right, so here we go. So we're bringing this down to 500. There we go. 500 of olive oil. Pipe it up slowly with oil. I see you always get some air bubbles, so we're going to pipe it up real slow. Again, we got an air bubble. One more try. Real slow because it's so viscous. All right, now we got it. And there's the olive oil. All right. And then the same thing for the canola oil. Wow, you really got to go slow. And then I usually get a little tap. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to use 500 microliters at 8020. I'm going to see how good my pipetman skills are because there's exactly one mil in there. And this guy, good enough to me. All right, now let's see how these guys look after we shake them and vortex them. I do them both at the same time here. All right, yep, you can see it's just kind of like an oily oily water methanol mixture here. I'm assuming all the rest of the extra oil is going to go to the bottom. We'll vortex these and mix them up really good like it says and then we're going to spit them out. Okay, good. On to the centrifuge. One, two, put on the lid. go up to five minutes like it says and I'm gonna do it at 15,000 just because I'm overachiever all right so a little side quest I did run these for oil analysis on the GCMS GCMS with you know derivatization BSTFA or methyl ester derivatization uh, gives you great lipid data just the problem is, is it kind of always looked the same to me so I'm not really trusting it I'm also not that interested in this type of data because you kind of just look up in a book what the fatty acids are. But so we're looking at the olive oil. There's a peak in the olive oil and a peak in the canola oil that are the exact same location and give me the exact same mass. And the hit in NIST, that open itself up here, is oleic acid. And again, it's the methyl ester because I methylated this ester. Uh, so it didn't have the free fatty acid and mess up my GC column. So I can confirm that there is oleic acid there. It seems like it's the C9 oleic acid. But sometimes I don't trust uh, my double bond positions, but it looks like it's the Cis9 oleic acid. All right. So then this other one really early here, that is in both of them as well. Another reason why I don't really trust this GCMS data and uh, that's palmitic acid. Again, with the methyl ester, this is fully unsaturated palmitic acid. No double bonds. All right, beeping means it's done. Open it up. All right, so here's a skilled move, guys. You gotta hold the rotor with your pinky finger so you can unscrew it with one hand while you're holding the phone. All right, hopefully we got a nice clear-ish top layer. Ooh, we do, and that's why they said it only take 300 microliters all the oils on the bottom. So again, we're not really going to be looking at the oil. We're going to be looking at all the other stuff in the oil. I have to do this carefully. Open the tubes carefully. And then we're going to pull up very carefully from the top, but on the very top, just so we don't risk anything that's floating. There is 300 of the canola fraction. I think we did a really good job on that. New tip. And then we're going to do the same thing on the olive oil. Really good pull. All right, so there we go. It says grab 450 microliters of water. And we set this to 450. Oops. Okay. 
450 of water, 450 of water, and we'll go ahead and put these in the fridge. It already looks so clear. I, I do think these may be just ready to run. Alright, so I just put it into the LCM Mass Low Volume Vials onto Zevo Q-Top into the auto sampler. And you can see here, we're getting good data. It's already coming off here. We ran a blank, then canola oil, then olive oil for the adulterant method on the C18 column, fast DDA, so that is de data dependent fragmentation uh, with my metabolomics method. This is about as good as you can get. Before we go look at the data, the Mass Spec Everything Spotify pod has something relevant. Actually, the first episode, I didn't even realize that this would be relevant for oil, but this molecule SSL is an additive to improve mix tolerance in food, especially processed food. I bet you this is called um, this is called lactic acid. It's a lactic acid conjugated. Well, here, I'll just show you. All right, so the canola oil has finished running. I ran that one first. Oops. There we go. That's something better. And you can see there's not a lot of polar stuff in the canola oil, but there's a lot of non-polar stuff. So these are going to be the fatty acids conjugated with different things. And uh, as I was saying, we have uh, sodium sterile lactate SSL as an FDA approved food additive. So we are looking for this guy particularly. So here's some of the canola oil data on top. I'm not going to search through everything. Maybe I will send through on Target and get a big list. And then we get a look at all of these things. But let's look at this 353 and this 355 and this 357. And then we're going to search this in HMDB. So the first thing we're finding in here is the 355. Let's see, 355. That is going to be linoleic acid with a glycerol on it. So glycerol monolinolate. If you look at glycerol monolinolate, it's basically just linoleic acid with a glycerol still attached to it. So if you're taking the triglyceride and breaking it, maybe you'll leave that single glycerol on there, or potentially they're kind of making it exogenously and they have this kind of oil and water emollient uh, and flavoring agent that's kind of made synthetically, but since you could theoretically find it in olive oil or canola oil, uh, it's, uh, you don't even have to probably report it. So it is a moisturizer, emulsifier, and flavoring agent. So that's the first unique thing we're finding. This is only uh, in the canola oil. All right, so now 353. 353, we're seeing a bunch of interesting things. Um, this makes the most sense. So same kind of situation, but this is the palmitic acid. And we did see palmitic acid and oleic acid in the GC data, so that makes sense. And this is the glycerol conjugate of that. So again, probably some sort of flow additive or from processing. All right, so then 357, look who that is. That is the sterile lactic acid, the SSL. That is that molecule I was talking about. SSL is food additive from the FDA and it is uses kind of a flow agent, really common. I don't think you're required to label it. Maybe you are. Interesting. All right, well, we'll use some MSMS and confirm that that guy's there, but I'm pretty confident just from the hit here, that's what we got going on. All right, let's see, do we have anything else? That's it for what we're searching in here. All right, so now let's do the olive oil. The olive oil has way more polar stuff in it, completely different. This is a great way to see the real differences in oil sprays and probably in olive oils in general. I think we finally have a really good olive oil method, so feel free to suggest oils uh, to analyze in this way. We're gonna see a little bit of the lipids through polar conjugated glycerols and things like that, but we'll see all the adulterants the masses I'm going to be, let's just do the top stuff here. So I think we're going to go looking at maybe, let's do 225, 433, 417, 379, and 363. You can see this is what the data looks like. Lots of stuff going on here. We're going to send this through on targeted and maybe uh, post another video on this. So I took all these masses, just went for the most of Kind of 
most intense things, and this is what I'm going to search. Uh, protonated and sodiated 0.02 error. So we're just using HMDB, and we're not looking at a lot of MS, MS data. Since there's so many peaks, we're going to have to put this through Cirrus. Let Untargeted chew away at this. Uh, maybe in the next few days I'll have a big list, and then we can do uh, kind of a deep dive into all the different things we found. But there is way more in there than I was thinking there'd be. All right here, first hit, 363, this is the olive oil, so it could be gabrellins. Again, we have to send this through MSMS on target, but I'm liking this lingo stericide, a glycone. When you search this molecule, it does seem to be an extra virgin olive oil bioactive polyphenol, so that is actually tracking right to olive oil. So I think that probably confirms that this is olive oil. Um, so I like that hit, that's good. All right, so then the next thing we got here. Boy, there's a lot of stuff. I couldn't guess which one this is. We're definitely gonna have to send this through MSMS. Um, take a look at maybe the next. This is just one PPM. Let's see. Anyone's got a clue? These are gabrellins as well, potentially. You know, gabrellins are plant hormones that you could, could be used here, so who knows. Oxyoxenol. Mm, I don't know what that is. Probably not that. All right. Just doing a quick one. Oh, here we go. We got another egg glycone. This is the oleo. This is another probably olive oil. Yep, olive oil cultivar egg glycone. Man, there we go. We're really doing a good job here. 379. Another olive oil egg glycone peak. This is what these things kind of look like. These polyphenolics. Um, as you can see, not a lipid. Really cool. All right, that's why we're seeing them early, because they are not lipids, they're phenolics. All right, so again, we keep hitting gabrellins. I'm thinking maybe there's some hormone carryover from spraying these olives. Um, they use a gabrellins to spray fruit, so it does kind of make sense. Um, and those would carry through, but again, got to send through untargeted to confirm all this stuff. All right, and then this peak at 433 could be another kind of polyphenol. Let's see if we got anything that stands out. No. Well, you can see all the hits yourself. Let me know if anything stands out. We'll go ahead and these mango stands are kind of cool. Sometimes those are in there. Okay. Synaptic acid. I wouldn't think you'd have synaptic acid. This is uh, elanolide. I don't know what that is. It's kind of a neat sounding name. Oh, that's what it is. Elanolide is a new constituent of extra virgin olive oil. So that is in olive oil used as a marker of high quality oils. Man, this is some pretty good stuff. It's got a lot of polyphenols that are indicative of like really good extra virgin olive oil in the spray Trader Joe's olive oil. Kind of wasn't expecting that, but I think our method's working great. Man, this oil extraction method is fantastic. I mean, these couldn't look more different. I gotta say, and that 355 peak right there is right on top of itself. So the chromatography and the, three, and the two, 279, so it's not a chromatography issue or a carryover issue. It just looks like we got a great oil method. Um, pretty excited to try this on other things.